I'd like to welcome you to the page. If you haven't seen these videos before, check out the library that I've started to create on mindset, performance, ideas, and new perspectives and ways to look at how you are gonna draw the best out of yourself in ballroom or Latin dancing and also in life. You know, I'm a big believer, especially when people come into the studio, uh, of explaining to them that they might have come for the dancing, but you leave with life, right? Like it's about getting skills to help you cope better, to manage stress better. Ultimately, so when you come in here and you learn, you can execute, you can deploy better on what you learn and you can become a better dancer. And interestingly, I had a lady come back from Blackpool, uh, <clears throat> Brittany, and I was asking her, as I always ask my students, I was like, look, you went to this comp, best championship in the world, what did you learn? Like, what did you really learn? And what did you gain from the experience? One of the things that she, she pointed out was how that every time that she dances, she needs to step out of her comfort zone on like every single time, every group class, every private lesson, every training. And I went, man, if I could just bottle that, that is the win, right? Like that is the trick. And so part of what I'm doing here is to help you gain that courage and gain that confidence and gain the understanding that you need to help you move forward in the direction that you want to go, right? To literally create the best version of yourself. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean becoming a champion, right? That may be for you, may not be for you. Uh, that may mean that you want to become a teacher or a coach, maybe not. But either way, you know, let me know what your goals are. Let me know how I can assist you. How can I help you? And one of the things I want to talk to you today about is music. And is it something that you struggle with? Like, have you ever had the challenge where, like, you know the music's playing, it's like, you obviously can hear it, it's freaking loud, and then you dance, and you finish dancing, or you finish moving, and you're like, I'm pretty sure I wasn't in touch with that music at all, or I wasn't even listening to that music, or I, what song was even playing, right? Like, was that a cha-cha? I can't remember. Have you ever had a moment like that? I know I've had, I've had plenty of them, right? And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I just danced a whole bunch of stuff and it wasn't even to the music. Well, that's so common, it's almost ludicrous. And let me explain what's happening. So, uh, by the way, thank you for joining me. Welcome to this Facebook Live. I uh, hope this angle works. I hope this is clearer for you. I've bought some new things to make it a bit better and a bit more professional. Um, but w what's actually happening, right? Music plays. As the music's coming out, it's, there's sound waves that are coming through time and space that are penetrating your eardrum. Your ear picks it up and sends a signal to your brain that you know, hits all these sound frequencies and whatever and triggers all the fireworks in your brain. And you hear and feel the music. Well, not necessarily feel it, but you hear it. And my argument today is that when you hear music, you don't necessarily feel the music. Now, a good example of this is that let's say you're out and you're about to dance and you've got your, your body ready and you're about to take a step forward. The music's playing. And all you're thinking about in your conscious mind is I need to take a step forward, I need to settle my body weight, or you know, I need to prepare my body before I move. All well and good, but in the moment of doing that, your conscious mind is drawing all your focus and attention on your physical body. You are not listening to the music when that happens. You're hearing the music. So you, you can't get away from hearing the music unless you're deaf because the sound waves are hitting you. But that does not mean you're listening to the music. Now, then you might say, well, what is the distinction between hearing the music and listening to the music? And I'll get to that in a minute. But I want you to be aware that in the moment that you're in a lesson or you're in a class and, so, and the coach has said to you, fix this, do that, that's all in your head, right? You're analyzing your logic, your reasoning. You're trying to make a physical change somewhere. You're trying to put the signal from your brain into your body and go make the change, make it better. And there's a feedback mechanism. It's always going, right? Like a loop. So... In those moments, you're not connecting to the music. Now, if you're not connecting to the music, how the hell are you expressing the music, right? Like you're not really realizing your full potential. And this is the battle that we all face. It's like, how do we get out of that, that state? Because we have to actually turn that off. We have to get in a state where, okay, we're now showing our feelings and they're being demonstrated through our physical body. And, like, and it's a oneness with the music. Well, that's what listening to the music is. Now, by the way, for those out there that have partners, in life and also in dancing, you're going to like this, right? Because hearing your partner is not listening to your partner, right? So what do we then listen with? We listen and pay attention to this. We listen with our emotions. So we hear with our ears and we listen with our emotions. That's a big fundamental difference because, again, music's hitting you. If you're listening to the music, it's actually taking over your emotions, 
right? Like, because what's happening is it's actually going into your subconscious mind. Now, your conscious mind is where you think. Your subconscious is where your emotions are present. Okay, so if the music is hitting you there and it's going into you, you're feeling it. Now, when you feel the music, you're connecting to the music. In that moment, you can now express that music. That's the goal, right? Because it's going into you. You're also, what I would say, dancing with your heart. So you're not what I would call a heady dancer. You're dancing with your heart versus your mind, right? Or not your mind, your brain. And to me, that's where the greatest um, feeling for you is going to be generated, right? Like, because how many times can you stand there and think, you know, settle my weight, settle my weight, step, think of my footwork, think of my foot positions, think of my posture, think of my space, think of my energy, think of this, think of that, think of that, think of that. Too much, right? You can't. It's confusion, confusion, confusion. When you get confused, anxiety hits. When you get confused, stress amplifies. When you get confused, it's disorderly. That's not a good place to be in. You certainly can't be creative and you certainly can't express your dancing to its fullest. Now, if you're feeling this, let me know. Like, leave a comment, share it. Like, tell me what you're thinking yourself and have you experienced this? Now, let's get back to the topic. Listening is one thing and we must listen and hearing is another thing. And don't confuse the two. All right. So we've got to listen with our emotions. Now, if we listen, we're not in the space of thinking, what do I need to do next? It's sort of this space that I, that I think is a, it's a really hot topic in the, in the neuroscience game. It's like flow. What is flow, right? In positive psychology, it's like this state of flow is like the most creative space. It's like you've experienced it, I've experienced it. It's like a moment where time evaporates and, and you're in this sort of oneness within yourself where you're just totally creative and you don't even, you look up and an hour's gone by, right? It's like, what just happened to me? Wow, I'm not even hungry. I'm not thirsty. Like everything just turns off. Now, what we're trying to do when we're dancing and performing is we want to get so involved in that music on an emotional level that then we use that to come back out and through our physical movement, right? And to me, that is the key. And our goal as an artist or to master ourselves and to master our dancing is to get to that state. So there's a time and place for our head to be in the game, to be like, listen, I've got to make these changes. My footwork sucks. You know, and just on a side note, I had a couple in today, really nice young new couple. They're like 16, 17. I'm like, listen, when you first learn to dance, I'm going to just let you know exactly what's going to happen. You're going to suck. Your footwork's going to be crap. You're going to be terrible. And you're just going to be bad. Okay, now we know that. Put it on the table, right? Who cares? Nobody cares. So get over it. Now let's focus on what you need to do. You've got to focus with your mind on your footwork. You've got to really get that going. You've got to use all your attention to fix problems, right? Then when the music comes on, you've got to switch that off. And you've got to train yourself, because it's not easy to do, to listen to the music, right? Listen with your emotions. That is freaking hard, right? But if you can do it, and I believe you can, you've just got to practice it, you're going to experience the movement in a very different way than if you only stay in your head and you're just standing there going, should I settle? Do I settle? Do I move my foot? So I now throw it back to you. Let me know what you thought about this. Hello, Helen. How's everybody going? Great to see you here. Wonderful to have you. Um, let me know if, what your questions are. I will answer them. I need to know what your problems are so I can help you in this quest to help you become the best version of yourself. If you haven't checked it out, our YouTube channel is growing. We've got over 3,000 subscribers on there. We've got almost 6,000 on this Facebook page. Thank you from the bottom of my heart of being here. Um, check it out. Go to boringmastery.com and boringmastery.tv uh, to check out the products and programs we have and get the free training. In the meantime, thank you, Linda. Awesome to have you here. It's been a blessing having you. And remember, you listen with your emotions and take that into your partnerships as well and see what happens as a result. Let me know what happens when you do this yourself. Thanks again.